Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and at the end of last year we moved to a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week we salvaged some more beach finds to take out on our boat and hopefully help catch us our supper. But our trip on the loch doesn't exactly go to plan. In fact, it went out with a bang. Plus, we give you an update on Willie's run-in with the dreaded COVID. Join, Join us, us as we continue. continue. Live in the sky life. You join me sitting in the cuddy of my boat. I'm in the very front part. Now you can see daylight up here and on the other side as well. And that's holes that other people have drilled in order to put the awning on and also the lights that were on the side. So what I'm gonna do is fill all these holes. I do ceramic repairs as just a hobby, but uh, that means that I've got the stuff you can do it with. It's really, really hard stuff called Milliput and it's really, really waterproof as well. So I'm sure it'll do this job, especially if it's getting painted afterwards. So what I've done is I've just scraped away just some of the detritus from uh, the previous jobs that have gone on in here. And now I'm gonna just fill these holes and uh, yeah, that'll make sure that the water isn't coming pouring in. It's great that we've got the cover, but what's the point in having a cover if the cuddy is full of all these holes? It's like a sieve. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was one there, but that's been filled. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that's just on that side. There's more over there as well. So I'm going to fill these holes with the waterproof putty and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, that's all the holes filled. I'll need to sand them back at some point and paint them. But at least it's watertight now. In about four hours, that'll be rock hard. And uh, once it's sanded and painted, you won't even see it. So I'm really chuffed with that. Another job on the boat. The heavens open and it started absolutely pouring with rain. And I mean pouring. So I've uh, run into the shed. I managed to get the cover on. It got soaked in the process. I just hope that the millipot's okay because it's water soluble until it's set and then it's totally waterproof. So I may have to do that again. I really hope not. I'll be a bit of a nightmare. The weather forecast said nothing about rain, so a sky for you though. Sometimes I think the weather forecast is the work of fiction here. At least the shed's waterproof though, eh? Yeah. Okay, the rain's chilled out a little bit. It's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's still raining. Oh, and there's the postie. Hello. Pretty chuffed with that cover. It really is doing the job. Now let's see what the postie's got for me. The postie had some parcels for Sarah. Nothing for me. I haven't ordered anything, so I don't know why I was thinking it was for me anyway. No, it's not. So uh, I'm going to take it to our studio. Postie's been. Hi, Jack. Anything exciting? Oh, I've got a letter from the Highland Council. Okay. Do you think they've actually figured out yet that we're not a holiday cottage? Possibly. Nope. <laughs> And then there's the printing issue that she's got going on. I've been hiding outside tinkering with the boat to avoid any stresses from the uh, the printer not communicating with the computer. Yeah, it should have been a 10 minute print job just to do a few extra prints for Etsy. And that was about two hours ago. Oh dear. I think I'll get back to so, my boat. I'll get there. You will. Yeah. Right, time to get back out to this boat and see what else I can do before I plunk it back in the water. Right, so I've sanded the outside and it's nice and flush on the outside and I've sanded the inside as well but not as much because I just need to give it a little bit of a key to paint it. I'm probably going to paint the boat next year. I want to have fun on it this year to get out in the water and enjoy it for the remainder of the season and then over the winter I'll probably do more to it. Looking good and now hopefully there's no more holes inside this cuddy. So if it does rain when I'm out in the water I can just jump in here and I'll be dry. Cool. Hopefully you'll be glad to know that the printer issue did get sorted. The Epson customer service got back to me. I emailed them with the problem and they came back pretty quickly actually and they told me exactly what to do. Four and a half hours later, I've got my prints done. I've got my Etsy sales ready to post tomorrow. In between printer headaches, I've been doing a stock take of all my flawed prints. It's various prints that I've done that have got a tiny flaw. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I don't really want to send them out for the full cost of the print, but they're still perfectly fine. So I've been keeping hold of them. They're just prints where maybe there's a little flaw in the paper or a little spot of ink has come out 
or they've got caught in the printer mechanism and there's a little bit of a crease, but the image is still fine. So what I'm gonna do is list them on Etsy as a sale, slightly imperfect prints for a reduced price. There's a few sets of note cards as well. Some of the cards came with like a tiny little mark on the card. So if you have been looking at my Etsy store, but wanted something a bit more affordable, by the time you're watching this, it should be all on Etsy and ready to go. So I'll put a link in the video description below. It would be so nice to see them go to homes where they're going to be loved rather than throwing them out, which I would hate to do because I don't like waste. <laughs> I'm also very excited about something else that I'm gonna be putting on my Etsy store, which is some She Walks She Paints mugs. I've had to get them printed by an external company because obviously I don't have the facility to print mugs in my studio yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. I have done five different designs. There's my thistle. Culloden Thistle. There's a Scottish black-faced sheep, which is one that I found and photographed in Glen Brittle. The Gorse, which is one of my favourite paintings that I've done. The Highland Coo, found and photographed here on the Isle of Skye. And I've done the Three Wild Mushrooms from the Scottish Highlands. If you do want one of those, there's only a really limited amount. I've only done six of each design. They will be up on my Etsy store by now. So if you do want one, please head across and have a look. Maybe it's time for a cup of tea. <laughs> You may remember when we did the beach clean, I found a couple of lobster pots. Well, I'm going to fix them and we're going to use them and hopefully catch some lobsters. I looked online, they're about £100 each. They're crazy expensive. So why not just fix the ones that I found and uh, at least we'll get some use out of them, I hope, anyway. You're going to help me, Jack? You're going to help me fix these lobster pots? Or do you just want to play with your wooden blocks? I have a feeling you just want to play with your wooden blocks, of which there are several. There's one there. There's one there. There's another one there. Right, let's get these fixed. Got some blue nylon rope, got some twine, got some cable ties and a knife. Hopefully that should be enough to fix these. Got some damage there. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But we can fix that, can't we folks? Of course we can. Of course we can, Jack Spaniels. What do you think, Jack? Can we fix it? Of course we can. <laughs> Rain stopped play there. Anyway, I took it into the shed and did a little bit more when it started really pouring rain. And uh, I've now rescued my phone and I will show you what I've done. Apologies in advance to anyone that does this for a living out there. This is an absolute mess. I just hope it holds. Um, I've just tied loads of knots, loads and loads and loads and loads of knots and pulled it all back together with this nylon string. So hopefully that will do the job. There was a massive hole there the size of my fist basically before. So as you can see, actually I need a little one there as well. But there's little fixies all over the place now. Um, I put some cable ties on the knots. I put that rope on as well, actually, because that one was all frayed and coming away. So cable ties to double up my knots and make sure they don't come out. This is not neat. Um, I am no expert at this at all. In fact, I'm a complete amateur. So this will probably hold for like one fishing trip. But if it does, that's all I need it to. I'm not going to invest money in these things until I find out they're actually going to pull lobsters in. So that'll do me for the time being. And let's get the other one done. have two lobster pots Heath Robinson style but probably good enough for one season I hope all done and ready to go in the water well when I am that is and Jack was here helping the whole time by playing with his block <laughs> We are at the Old Inn in Carbost, having a little drink. Now we hadn't planned to come to the Old Inn in Carbost today. We planned on taking the boat out and we thought we won't bother filming driving over here because you know, we've done that bit already. You tie up the boat and you drive it over. Fair enough, easy. Well today we were driving over the hill and as we got to the top of the hill, we got a puncture in the trailer tire on the right hand side. So we managed to sort of limp down to Carbost and we've put the boat at the side, which is a nightmare. Today we were meant to be trying the boat out after the problems we had before and after Wayne fixed the boat, which was amazing. Well done, Wayne. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. But now we've got the boat sitting at the side of the harbour doing nothing whilst we figure out what we're going to do about the wheel. It really does seem like one thing after another with this boat, doesn't it? Never ending saga. Absolutely. So on the plus side, Sarah's having a nice little lager and... Uh, we're going to have some lunch. Oh, we're going to have some lunch. Yeah. But we're not going out on our boat today. Hopefully we might be able to get it in tomorrow with the tire still goosed. Might have to buy some new wheels. Definitely going to have to buy a new tire. Let's just see what happens. In the meantime, let's have some lunch. Yep. 
Maybe you should have bought a quad bike after all. Oh, maybe. The option was buy a quad bike or a boat, and Muggins here chose the boat. <laughs> What you got? That classic pub lunch of smoked salmon, cream cheese bagel. We have had this before, it's really lovely. Yeah, it is really good. And chips. So, silver linings. I get taken out for lunch. Yeah, I bought it as well. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> this boat thing was your idea. True. You love it though, when it's working. Ooh. And Jack is under there, he's got a bowl of water, but he hasn't touched it, he wants to get in the sea. Jack, Jack, say hello to the people. Hiya pups, we may give you some smoked salmon. And by my, I mean well. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah. Well, I've had my bagel now. So what's this? I told you you would get some. Jack Spaniels always get some, doesn't you, Jack? What? Go on then, let them go. Good in the sea, pups. Ready? Ready? Go! Doesn't take long for Jack to find the water. <laughs> Hiya, pal! Now what? Come on, water dog. Let's go. We're going to see Richard. Should we go and see Richard? Your best pal. Come on then, let's go. Well, that took a while, didn't it? Yeah, we got him eventually. He doesn't really like coming off the beach when he gets there. Hey, bud. Exactly. All right, off we go. Okay, so yesterday was a bit of a misadventure with the boat. Obviously now it's down at Carbos Pier and it's uh, got a burst tire. I decided not to put it in the water with the burst tire because it could have just come off and ended up in the water and I don't want that. So I'm going to do it properly. So our weekend of boating was a bust, but as far as this boat's concerned, that's not much of a surprise. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll get it running and it'll all be good. But right now, uh, yeah, let's go and uh, jack up the boat and get the wheel off. I'm down at car boss now and I'm going to try and get this wheel off. Wish me luck. It's probably quite rusted on there. I've got some WD-40 penetrating oil, so hopefully that'll get in there and I can move it. If not, then uh, it stays on, but let's try. seen in the time lapse already but I couldn't get a spanner that fits there and none of my ratchet set is deep enough to go into that recess so I was kind of fearing that might be the case oh a robin has just come and say hello so yeah unfortunately it's a bit of a bust I can't get the wheel off so I'll try and see if Richard's got any sockets that will fit and a longer extension yeah I'll go home now I guess <laughs> really I'm starting to wonder if this boat idea was a good one <laughs> just one thing after the other. I'll get there. Richard just texts me because I text him asking if he's got any tools I can borrow. So I'm going over to his garage now rather sheepishly because my tools weren't up to the job to see what I can borrow. But lad, right, let's get over there. <laughs> Okay, I'm back in Carbost again. Richard was very kind. He's lent me some tools to do the job properly. I really do need to get some better tools at some point. Anyway, I'm going to go out there now and hopefully get this wheel lifted up and get it off. And then he reckons he might actually have a tire that fits back at his place. So I'm going to take the wheel to him and see if it fits. And if it does, happy days. If not, then I'll have to go to Portree tomorrow and uh, buy some new wheels. <laughs> I'll do for now. Let's get this wheel over to Richard. Richard, the man himself, fixing it with the tyre that he had in his yard, we hope. Step one done. So 
where Richard's going to put that on. But the problem is this uh, mud guard, which has been made of a piece of barrel, we have to get rid of because it's the wrong size for the wheel. So it's slightly larger than the other one, but this is just to get me home with the trailer. So that's going on now. Here she is, back in the drive. We didn't get our little jolly out in the water yet, but at least I got it back, thanks to Richard. Good lad. So uh, this is the tyre that I've got down there now. And uh, I'm probably going to put another one on like that. There we go. Back on the drive, ready for the next adventure. Now, I don't know if you can see, there's a little white speck over there. I'll try and zoom in. But this seems to be a group of sheep that are getting stranded or have got stranded. When the tide comes up, there's all these little bits of land and they've obviously got stuck on one and the tide has come in really quickly and got them. It's not high tide for another hour. Can sheep swim? I really hope they can. Maybe we'll have to tell the farmer. Go on guys, it's not that deep. I've got the binoculars out to check on them. I'm just watching them from the studio door. It's a really high tide this week. It's really high and really low tides. So it's still got another hour to come in. But we haven't got a contact number for the farmer. They're swimming! We made it! So the answer is yes, sheep can swim, but they don't like to, only when they really have to. <laughs> I'd like to say they won't get caught out like that again, but they are sheep. I'm glad they're okay. I know it doesn't really have to be said, but they're probably feeling quite sheepish right now. It's Saturday, so we weren't meant to be filming today. But, you know, living the sky life is every day, isn't it, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Where'd you go there? Lobster We found them down on the foreshore and we knew they were there, but I also knew they were really well weeded in. So we had to dig them out and I'll repair them tomorrow like the others. And that means we've got four now, which is brilliant considering they didn't cost anything. They're not the best order and perhaps next year we'll invest in new ones. But if they work this year for one season, for the price of a little bit of rope, some twine, some cable ties, then those are lobster pots that were worth foraging. All right. <laughs> a bit of manual labor. By the way, it was me that just dug them out, hence me being exhausted and Sarah pushing the wheelbarrow. <laughs> okay, we now have four pots. These ones need a bit more repair. The front ones, the back ones, you've probably seen me do already. Another project, maybe for tomorrow. It's a Sunday, you can just enjoy it at my own pace. But that's great. I mean, if you've got four lobster pots, you're four times more likely to catch lobsters than you are if you've only got one. So fingers crossed that we do get some lobsters. Why was the lobster thrown out of the disco? Just give it all that. I'm out in the shed because I'm going to make a fleet of lobster pots or just a rope with three lobster pots on it. It's going to have two weights on it, one at the very end and one at the start of the lobster pots and then it'll have the three lobster pots in between. These things here are called swivels and they swivel around the main rope and hopefully stop all from getting tangled up. I've never done this before so I've watched a few things on YouTube but I've also looked online and just sort of put together how I think I'm going to do it. It's the first time I've ever done it, so I'll probably do it wrong. There's no way of finding out unless we try. <laughs> this is the rope I'm going to use. I found this rope on the beach and recovered it, and it's still in good order. Rich just had a look at it as well, and he says it's fine to use. And I trust his judgment with these things because I've never done anything like this before. This chain also, I found that on the beach. It was just a massive ball of rust, and I just took my hammer when I got home, got most of the rust off, and now all the links are freed up. I didn't film that, actually. Maybe I should have done it. Anyway, this is the end that goes to the bottom, the seabed. I've tied on a chain already. There'll be another chain tied on about halfway up the rope and then the flow at the top. And the fleet of lobster pots, the three lobster pots, go down to the seabed, held down by the chains, whilst the rope goes to the top and is suspended by the boy, which I also found on the beach. Anyway, 
I've started this already, I started it last night, and I'm going to finish it now, and you can watch. I'm putting the swivel on here. Yes, Jack, I know you've got a block. And I put the tape on to make it spin easier, and also it doesn't wear away the rope, that's why I'm doing this. This is the way I sort of do it on YouTube. <laughs> Good old YouTube, eh? Good old YouTube. So that's two done now. One here and one here. I've got one more to do. I'm gonna get my last weight and then the, the line that goes up. So that kind of shows how it works. You've got the weight at the end beside Jack. Goes down, lobster pot on the swivel, lobster pot on the swivel, lobster pot on the swivel, and then it comes up to here, and then you determine the length of the rope depending on the depth of the water, and that's the boy at the end. So yeah, hopefully this little system will work. But yeah, and of course the weight up at the far end as well. These weights pull the lobster pots to the sea floor. You don't put weights inside them or anything like that, you put the weights on the line. Well hello everyone, it is day 9 of my Covid journey, <laughs> which is the worst journey I've ever been on, I've got to say. I'm not the kind of person that usually uh, gets really ill, if I get ill I'm ill for 5 minutes and you'll testify of that, it's yeah. usually very quick. This has been really bad and the first thing I'd like to say is a big thanks to everyone out there that's offered support. I've been reading the comments, I haven't always had the strength to answer them all. I've been sleeping for about three quarters of the time. I've never seen you sleep so much ever. <laughs> Normally Sarah's the sleeper out of the both of us. Um, in fact Sarah's nickname between us is Bones, as in lazy bones, because she <laughs> loves sleep. And I don't like sleeping. I like being up and about and doing things. But again, thank you so much to everyone because I have been reading through the comments and I've been reading it through the messages and I really do appreciate that. It really has kept me buoyant at a time that I've really been struggling, honestly. Day nine and I feel like I'm kind of getting somewhere. I still have no sense of taste. I still have no sense of smell. I have dizzy periods if I stand up too quickly. We did a test last night. I still tested negative the whole way through, which is insane. I don't know how I avoided that, and touch wood, it stays that way. But your test came up with a really faint line mm -hmm. for positive, so it's on its way out. The fatigue and the tiredness, that's going to stick around, we think, for a bit longer, so we're not going to push it too much, mm -hmm. are we? No, I'm not very good at that though. The other day, a couple of, well, what, three, four days ago now, I thought, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going to go out to the shed. There's a lot of mess out there, various different ends of projects and things that I've been focusing on. So I had to sort of wade through and tidy it up. It was pretty hard going. I mean, really, you felt it. Compared to normally, you would just chuck everything around and no problem at all. But I think I was out there for, what, a couple of hours? Not even that, I don't think. And then I got in and um, went to my bed and I was out cold all day for the rest of the day and the next day. It really did beat me up. Normally that kind of thing, you just take it for granted, you can just do it no problem whatsoever. It absolutely battered me. It's a struggle, but I can see now that there's going to be an end to it. Bless Sarah, for the last two weeks, she's been, well, a week and a half, she's been editing the videos. Usually it's both of us that does it pretty much equally. I'm just so pleased that we filmed all this footage in advance. We're literally just filming everything we do, pretty much, that we think you guys will be interested in. Sometimes we think, is anyone going to want to watch this? Or will we ever use this? The answer is yes, we probably will. It's exciting now as well, like moving forwards from where we are now. We've done a lot of the building already. There are other projects we've still got to do. The majority of the stuff that we'll be doing moving forwards is probably going to be more towards Sarah's art, my music, adventures, going all over the place. Many adventures we do need to do on Sky still because yeah, we've, been, we have chance. we've been quite builders. insular just because of the, the work we've been doing. So we had all the building work going on and then we went straight into the boat stuff. As you can probably tell from this week's video, it's still engrossing us quite a lot but also then the COVID mm. getting a little bit stir crazy. It's lucky that we live somewhere so beautiful. Over the camera's shoulder, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> over there, 
is uh, the beautiful view of the trees and the, the birds flying around and stuff. And I, I can't say enough how much I appreciate being able to see that. It's also slightly, it also slightly tears at the heartstrings Haunting because, you. because it's there and I want to be in it. And it's been such lovely weather as well, so it's really quite frustrating. And even though I'm fine, I'm testing negative, I've got no symptoms. Obviously, I can't really go anywhere either because I don't want to leave you alone for too long. No, and also, I might still carry it, so I don't want to go anywhere and mix with people. So, we're both having to stay here, and it's frustrating in different ways for both of us. So yeah. We can't wait to actually get out of the house and out of the Glen and do some more exploring as well on Sky, so it will be coming. It wouldn't be fair for us not to report back to you as well because a lot of people have been asking how I am, and the truth is, I am improving and I will be better soon. We are taking your advice and not yeah. doing too much too soon. We are, we absolutely are. Reading your words and your comments and your encouragement has been so important to me like i can never thank you enough so we'll probably wrap it about here and um, just on a high and say we're coming back stronger we're coming back better and without you guys out there and your support i couldn't have done it so thank you so much and uh covid Yay. <laughs> As usual folks, thank you so much for watching our video, we really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please do leave us a like, a comment or subscribe to our channel, it really helps us out and it's free to do. Or if you feel like it, you could pop over to Kofi and buy us a cup of coffee or Jack Spaniels a wee dog treat. If you want to support our channel more long term, you can head over to Patreon and become one of our amazing patrons. You get a bunch of extra content for helping us out every month. We're doing a question and answer theme at the minute and it's my turn next, which is going to be interesting when you're feeling up to it yeah when i'm feeling up to it if you want to check out the sale on my etsy store the link to that and all our other pages are in the video description below thanks again for watching and we will see you next week jazz hands we gotta love the jazz hands we're leaving our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life Right pups Jack's comfy Where am I gonna sit? Have you got... Have you got... Have you got four pots? You're four times likely, you're four times more likely to catch them than, than if you have no pots. Okay. Stop sniffing your nether regions, please. You're on camera. If you've got four lobster pots, you're four times more likely to catch lobsters than you are if you've got zero lobster pots. <sighs> Interesting theory there, Willie. You could go over to Kofi and buy us a cup of coffee. We needed a cup of cold. I think I just need a little bit less COVID. Yeah. Can we dial down the COVID less and COVID, up the coffee? coffee. <laughs> so, if you've got four lobster pots, if you've got four lobster. <laughs> yeah, don't trust everything you see on YouTube. Well, don't trust this, I've never done it before. We'll see if it's a disaster. I hope not, because I like lobsters. You want to do Patreon? Thanks again. Would you Patreon already? Would you do Patreon? I'm still not alright yet. Focus. Folks. One more thing. Tastes like nothing. Click here to subscribe to Live in the Sky Life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.